afternoon you're welcome to this live broadcast um if you're live right now with us i'm just going to have a look down on the you know on the computer screen and just check if i'm actually live right now because sometimes technical um okay so thank you so much for joining me today and i hope your summer holiday is going on well um how are your children doing are they enjoying the summer holiday as well you're welcome to this live broadcast thank you so much for joining me my name is bc um for those of you who may not know who i am we're just meeting me for the very first time and i'd love to know your name where you're joining me from um if you're in the uk please let me know if you're in the usa please let me know if you're in i mean any part of the world you're from africa anywhere please leave a comment so that i can welcome you properly to this live broadcast and as usual please sh hit the share button and let your friends know that i'm going to be talking about my kangaroo care story right now so if you see me looking down um that's because i'm going to um occasionally try to see if i can respond to your comments or also read out your comments as well so let's keep this interactive and um, even though i'm going to be facilitating this discussion i'd love for this discussion to be as interactive as possible so let's see if we have anybody live with us Okay, so I'm right there now. I'm going to be catching up on your comments right now. So, yes. So, please, I can see that we have some views, but I would love you to leave a comment. Tell me who you are. Oh, that's... I'll just turn this down. Sorry. Let's turn the volume down. Sorry, that's an echo right now, so I'm just going to pause this so I can... So, where is the volume button? Computers, computers, computers can be tricky need to turn the volume down okay so somehow my volume button is hidden so i don't want the echo to disrupt this live video so i've just turned that off so this means that i may not be able to see your comment but i will occasionally probably just try to log in so i can see your comment so if you're watching these on a replay as well you're welcome again i'll be talking about my kangaroo care story Today, I was hoping to have a discussion with the kids, but um, I've arranged for the kids to go to a play center. So I just, you know, wanted to be able to focus on interacting with you. Hopefully, I will have some more opportunities in the future to be able to have the children um, that's joined yourself feature in my live videos so you, you can also get to meet them as well. So, my kangaroo care story, um, this is the first time I will be sharing my kangaroo care story live in a live video. So this is pretty um, special. It's a very special moment. Um, I've actually shared it once in an event, a Sling It, yes, not West event, um, last year, yes. And I'm hoping that today I can also share a bit because I know that we only have 30 minutes. So... I'll try as much as possible to see how well I can do a summary and I'll probably post a link to my Sling It, um, you know, talk because there was a little, um, some aspect of the discussion of my talk was actually put on our website, that's on the Joy Angel blog. So I'll probably put a link to that as well so that you can also um, learn more about my kangaroo care story from that particular talk so 
what is kangaroo care um if you're watching this on a replay as well i would love you to also tell me what you think kangaroo care is that's if you know if you're familiar with what kangaroo care is leave a comment tell me what you think kangaroo care is if you're watching live right now as well uh, can you tell me what you think kangaroo care is what what does kangaroo care mean to you so kangaroo care um from my practical experience also means skin to skin so this was um something that you know i actually practiced with both children with both joy and joseph and even though the circumstances surrounding um how i was introduced to kangaroo care wasn't particularly a happy circumstance wasn't particularly a happy time because the children um were poorly at the time but then looking back now i'm kind of grateful that i had the chance to experience this because this experience however difficult it was at the time it actually gave birth to what we now call joy and joe baby rap uh carrier so it's around about 10 years ago was when it actually started with joy and if you saw my intro video that's the, the the short video i did introducing you to this topic uh, to this live discussion joy was in the video so joy is certainly a lot older now and um, she's going to be 10 and my experience with kangaroo care was then consolidated when i had joseph two years after so for the purpose of this discussion um i'll tell you um, more about joseph mainly because it was shortly after then that we um as a brand began to expand on our knowledge and experience as a family and we basically um, built on that experience and that on the inspiration we had from both joy and joseph and created these amazing eponymous British brand that we call Joe. So before Joseph was born, um, we, as my husband and I, Neo, we had the, you know, we, um, we believe that having a healthy sibling for Joy, who was born two years before Joseph, we believe that um, that was really going to help Joy because Joy was born with um, a learning disability that was diagnosed after she was born. So we believed, and also based on some of the re um, some of the reading we did at the time as well, the sibling interaction can be very, very beneficial. So that's why our hands were already full at the time. We started hoping and praying and trying for another baby. We were blessed with Joseph. Two years after, then um, I've run about my um, there's two months into two months away from my due date. Now, <laughs> this is a live video, so certainly not scripted. So I'm just going to try, because Joseph is eight, I'm gonna to try to remember as much as I can, because this um, this obviously is something that's happened a while ago. Um, so around about two months into my due date, unexpectedly, my waters broke. And this was at home, I was just, hopping around the house, doing my usual. It's almost as if pregnant women towards their due dates or, you know, yeah, as they move, like in their third trimester, they kind of get this burst of energy. And that was what happened. I had this burst of energy and I just was doing a lot of household chores around, even furniture that didn't need um, rearrangement. I was basically always doing something or the other around the house. And on that particular day, I, I can remember very well that I was cleaning the house, then my waters broke. So <laughs> this basically started the journey to um, welcoming Joseph um, unexpectedly, prematurely. So my husband rang an ambulance and prior to that, I was initially thinking, well, this might be a urine leak. And I didn't initially ask for help because it was very early in the morning. Um, my husband was still sleeping at the time. One way or the other, when I realized that this was certainly not a urine leak, I then screamed, Bea, then he started panicking because the water was everywhere. Then he rang an ambulance. Then um, when the ambulance crew came, they actually came prepared to um, help to support me to deliver Joseph at home. What I didn't know was that we had already had um, the NICU experience with um, 
Joseph's sister with joy. We were very determined not to have that happen. So we were really, really sad and just saying, no, we're going to make it to the hospital. These babies are going to be born prematurely and things like that. Well, I'm going to do a summary. Got to the hospital. Um, had to do a tour of the neonatal unit again, despite that, you know, we've already had the experience. The neonatal unit wasn't new to us at all. So, on the day Joseph was going to be born, it was a really, really painful experience. He had to be born um, via an emergency zero because at that point, doctors had to consider my health because I was in so much pain. That's what happens when you're... Um, waters actually break and um, um you know um unexpectedly basically you're at risk of infection it was a condition called polyadrominos where my pregnancy barely expanded you would almost think i was going to have twins so i had to go to the theater they even dad was at home caring for joy he couldn't wait the doctors basically couldn't wait for him to consent because we were even thinking well if i was going to end up having a cesarean at least my husband should be there to welcome his son but no <laughs> you know if, you, if any of you have ever experienced an, an emergency cesarean which i don't don't wish this on anyone you know there's so much panic and everyone running around and things um trying to do a summary <laughs> so Joseph had to be born prematurely and I was on full anesthetic and um, by the time Joseph came outside I was asleep because I was on full anesthetic um, so it was moved over to the neonatal unit and based on what the doctors relate to my husband and I Joseph had no heartbeat and they basically had to resuscitate him so um, at the NICU, that's the neonatal unit, wires, tubes, this, our second journey <laughs> into the NICU started again. And this time around, unexpectedly, we didn't even know that this time around we were going to have a longer experience because Joseph was in for approximately six months. It was almost as if he was going to be in hospital from birth till age one. You know, it was... From one chest infection to the other and it was very very tiny so during that period of time I remember the fact that when Joy was born um, Joy spent four weeks at the NICU a Caribbean nurse introduced me to kangaroo care and I was really really amazed that you know despite how difficult things were something so amazing could happen you know something so you know that that human touch so with joseph it was a whole new ball game because obviously it was premature we had to wait for joseph to gain weight a little bit before we were allowed to hold him we would just go and see him in i mean so basically we were just seeing him in this cube in this glassy cube in the incubator um eventually when joseph was strong enough to um have cuddles that was when we introduced uh, kangaroo care to him and this was based on our experience with joy we were really really hoping that with kangaroo care we can start bonding with him and we were really hoping that this was going to reduce trauma on both sides both for joseph and for us because the nic units can be a really really difficult place not just for the child even for the parents as well and there's so much information, so many things going on. Well, the cat, you know, I feel that talking about my kangaroo care story, you know, it isn't complete if you do not sort of get a picture of what it was like before Joseph was, before um, the, the child was born, you know, before Joseph was born. So, so this was his pre, so this was a pre kangaroo experience, a pre birth um, happenings. So I noticed that before. We started kangaroo care. There was usually a lot of, um, you know, this separation between mother and child. That's between myself, um, my husband and Joseph, and myself and Joseph as well. It really, really was something that really traumatized us. Um, 
that's for the fact that during that time I was expressing and this was advised as well by the doctors so because I wanted to um, feed him exclusively despite that you know I found that, that my breast milk was really really reducing and that was because of the separation and there was also certainly a lot of anxiety because of the distance so as soon as um, and obviously as well because Joseph also went through some fractures fragility fractures as a result of his very brittle bones at the time it took a while before we were able to introduce kangaroo care and that's something you have to note that when children are poorly a kangaroo care um, has to be determined really by the medics you know that's by the pediatric doctors so it's um, it's usually a multidisciplinary thing they all the doctors and the ward around then decide okay your child is a uh, well enough the, your child would not be completely well at the time you know to start uh, kangaroo care but they want to um, introduce kangaroo care mainly when your child can survive outside the incubator so just imagine the incubator as um, an environment for simulating the womb experience so at the time they had to um, create this um, this environment in the incubator for him to be able to reach 10 so around about when we started kangaroo care was quite close to when his actual due date should have been and what happened was I was given a reclining chair and obviously a screen as well just for privacy because the ward was quite huge really lots of parents lots of children put in the same ward and the kangaroo and your kangaroo care skin to skin experience is supposed to be quite personal to you so thank god for screen so you have this screen it's more like a, um, a collapsible screen to so basically use that to shield joseph's uh, incubator and us that's my husband and i so i sat down a nurse is usually going to be there mainly because you know if anything happens in terms of unexpected if the child stops breathing or if the child needs resuscitation so it's usually um except if your child is actually stable breathing wise or you know it is usually going to be a nurse with you also to also support you as well in terms of the proper positioning so i had um, Joseph so basically I was I was asked to take my under well my bra off and initially I was quite skeptical about that because I was like this is a ward a big ward but the, the nurse just um, assured me that I was well covered and nobody was going to peep into the um, you know into that area without actually asking for permission so I took my underwear off and then I was given this very lovely dress now this wasn't a carrier <laughs> so this will let you understand that it's been a journey from that point till now this is actually like a piece of clothing like a shirt and this didn't look fancy like the kangaroo care shirt you see today it wasn't elastic it was a shirt that had ties the picture of that shirt is still vivid on my mind i can't remember it it was blue it was a light blue it was almost like a turquoise shirt it had ties he had two ties, two long ties, and there was this uh, rectangular uh, white, sort of like like a muslin square or something as well that was going to be used to cover Joseph. So, um, so just like I said, my underwear was off, then I wore this shirt, so my chest was bare. Then Joseph was stripped down. This is, is a well, just he didn't really have clothes on anyway in the incubator, but he had nappy on, and the nappy obviously had to be there to prevent <laughs> you know accidents like just a wean on me or pulling on me so but i know that in some cases some parents practice kangaroo care without nappies or anything but in the hospital at that particular time it had just a nappy on so his entire body was naked and i was also as well up till my uh, waist then except for the shirts you know that i wore then Joseph was placed on my chest. I was in a reclining chair, so that's good because he allows Joseph. I'm almost wishing I was able to demonstrate this to you, but I know that that's going to be difficult because obviously there's no real baby yet to show you. I can post links to some kangaroo care um, videos so that if you're actually new to this concept, you can actually see it in practical. So I was in a reclining chair and 
um, Joseph was placed on my chest and then that white uh, muslin square I told you about was used to cover Joseph so remember that there's nothing in between myself and Joseph completely skin to skin honestly it's easier saying that word or when you actually experience it after you had some separation from your child you would almost I can't you know I told myself before the uh, like this question that okay this is it's been about almost 10 years no crying be strong you're a strong woman <laughs> so you know but at that time oh there were loads of tears it was you know it was on my chest like, at last at last that was the first day you know it was on my chest and then i was in a reclining position then, then as soon as they read so between myself and joseph there was nothing except for the tiny teeny really teeny uh nappy um as soon as it was on my chest the nurse quickly used this kangaroo care shirt to she tied it around my back and then i have this lovely pillow supporting my head as well then i just held it to joseph remember that because this is a clothing and not the carrier you do have to support that child and there were lots of tubes so you can imagine the nurse was sorting out the tubes and the ventilators because it was on breathing uh, support at the time and this was the first you know kangaroo care experience with joseph remember that i said we had practiced skin to skin with joy but i particularly um while thinking about today felt that joseph experience because it was a premature baby was probably going to be a lot more um what's the word now <laughs> was probably going to be a lot more uh, something that many of you those of you who've experienced kangaroo care probably able to relate to because unlike joy joy was a full-term baby and that's probably something i can talk about later on in another broadcast kangaroo you know practice kangaroo care with a full-term baby it's it's a it's a whole new it's a different experience when you're carrying a really tiny baby you would, you would almost think that baby that tiny baby is going to slip out of your hands because baby is so tiny so i the feelings i had when i held on to joseph for that moment was yes for real i am the mother of a son you know he's here you know all along when you just look at your child in the incubator so many emotions especially sadness confusion sometimes you're wondering you know is this child really here you know but as soon as you hold on to your child you, you you just you just have this feeling of this you feel so contented you you feel so happy that it's like the it's like all the happy hormones the oxytocin that they all start to overflow if there is any adjective that you can use to describe over happiness when you imagine a child who was really poorly who had no heartbeat was probably um you know probably probably in some circumstances they wouldn't have survived it and we saw that on the nic ward which is why i said that ward the ni the neonatal unit can be a very difficult place to be but then experiencing something you know the kangaroo care was a great experience in such a difficult environment when this started so because joseph really tolerated that very well these now started these was the beginning of our kangaroo care experience we started looking forward to like all of the twins we're always asking for more sometimes doctors would be like um he's working hard today with his breathing he's not going to have he's not going to be able to um have his uh, kangaroo care his skin to skin today um anytime i had time off from um holding joseph feeding him with his tube or, or anything i was reading up on these because i was quite curious and really just, just wanted to learn more obviously i had no idea there's going to be anything called the joy and joe brand you know but i was really intrigued more so i feel that it reconnected me with my roots you know carrying because whilst kangaroo care itself is not a product you know it's a way of carrying really really reset my brain you know <laughs> really did i started imagining you know those wonderful stories my mom told me whilst i wasn't born premature i wasn't poorly at bed but my mom carried me for a really long time 
instead of remembering during this period of time instead of reminiscing about those happy stories my mom told me it was a really 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 great experience I also noticed that my breast milk supply started to improve because Joseph because I could feel Joseph right on my heartbeat and Joseph as well miraculously started to improve and when you read upon kangaroo care you find out that there is a lot of research that docs you know the researchers are trying to um you know um publicize about the about the advantages of skin to skin the benefits of human touch via skin to skin you would feel you know i could feel joseph had joseph's habits on mine and then i would notice that if he was initially tensed up his breathing would then gradually start to set to normalize while joseph was on my chest there was a, there was usually and this is the same with joy as well is usually a saturation monitor you know they would always do that plug in so that they can see if the child is okay but you'll notice that is breathing before uh, the kangaroo care before the kangaroo care is breathing there was probably sporadic and then start settling down so your which is the reason why when you're kangaroo care um, well if there's a word like that we can do your skin to skin try as much as possible to be calm mainly because your child Will, will be right on your chest obviously you attend stuff you know your child's going to be right your your vibes i believe will be transferred on and this is from my own personal experience will be transferred to your child and i could feel it was magical feeling joseph's heartbeat you know you know on my chest at that moment when he's right there with me all those worries and concerns and information overload at that moment doesn't matter to me all that mattered to me right there that moment was that you know i'm a mom and my son you know it's i'm trying to find words <laughs> it is no script it is not easy to express but leave a comment tell me if you've experienced kangaroo care before or if you know someone who has experienced kangaroo care before i would love to know about it and um I'm just really happy that today I'm able to share my kangaroo care experience and despite that these continued for a while my husband as well had the chance to also um, have a skin to skin um, interaction with Joseph we believe that these are part of the things that have helped our children both Joy and both Joseph and that was mainly because even um, after their hospital stay we 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 then consolidated on that and then at home introduced ways of spending time with them on the skin to skin and just imagine on like the hospital at home you have a lot more privacy you if you you can choose not to have a nappy on your child as well you know that moment as well i can also help your child with temperature regulation um lots of things and just like i said it was a symbiotic relationship because not not just your child you, your child is not the only person that will benefit from the experience you would also benefit as well and i want to believe that uh, skin to skin experience kangaroo care also played a huge part in helping me combat in helping me to combat postnatal depression so whilst i was never diagnosed of that but many of you know that on the nic unit it's based on things that and the experience the very um, scary experience there's usually a lot of crying so whether or not I was formally diagnosed at the time after Joseph was born of positive depression there was a lot of crying but during those moments when I was anytime I hold him on I notice that it's usually singing we're usually singing and humming to him and happiness 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 so I want to believe that um because I because my husband and I practiced skin to skin a lot, even after I was discharged, this really, really played a huge positive role in helping us to adapt to our routine. And um, we still had to do some special um, things like tube feeding and oxygen and all that. But we found that um, the happy hormones that we got the bust of happy hormones that we got from our kid from our regular skin to skin really really helped us and i think because i'm here today many years after then looking at how well joseph and joy are doing and like in the case of joseph i can tell that it is very obvious that 
my skin to skin experience and my skin to skin practice has played a huge part in helping with this brain development is memory is amazing you can tell you know some of the things that you you see in him today that we see today we're just like is this real you know is is it the day he started singing elvis presley that we know very well that it's not a song that nobody's ever said like he would hear a song once and he would just pick it up these things do not correlate with the child who is brain damage and even doctors tell us that wow it has remarkably surpassed expectations and that is if there were ever expectation in terms of low expectations anyway but in terms of there are some certain things you would think would happen if a child is a brain damage you will not walk you will not talk you will not you know and i'm not saying i'm not going to sugarcoat and say um from the time he was born up till then it has been smooth parenting is a roller coaster ride and just imagine in our case special needs parenting but when you look at our experience you know i can i can say that maybe things might have been worse if we didn't start early to um bond with him via skin to skin and then joe and joe you know as brand you know if anything i'm glad that those moments in time when I was able to pause and think, and I said I had to reset my head, you know, really gave me the inspiration that I would love to do this more. I want to be there for my children. I don't, um, whilst I was really ambitious and then I just finished uh, my master's. So the thought of probably having a nine to seven was probably the normal thing that would have, the normal idea that would have come after I had children. But then I started thinking about creating um you know and, um creating something that was going to give them the chance to be there 100 percent. now that was something that did, didn't come easy in terms of the thought but i'll just feel that you know those moments where you're spending time with your child they're not wasted at all because they're also time for you as well to also reminisce and think plan so whilst at that time you know i i really couldn't see the future but then it started the inspiration for wanting to do something for other parents started at that time. I I was full of smiles and I was like, I would love to tell the world about this. You know, it's great. So I'm smiling today because where I am today with the brand, with my children, I sort of dreamt about it. That, oh, wow. I would, I hope the children, you know, obviously survive the NICU and, um, you know we go on to i would you know we really wanted to inspire other parents as well and this is something that i'm glad that via this brand you know in our own little way we are putting smiles on people's faces despite that our experience was a really difficult one and believe me that is a summary there is no way i'll be able to go into everything like even talk about big sister joy's experience that is a long long story but um, I just wanted to have this chat with you today to really let you know um, that kangaroo care was really something that started this, we can even call it a movement, we call it and Joe, the carry my joy movement. You know, I'm so grateful that you joined me today. Thank you. I hope you've picked one thing or the other. For my kangaroo care story i'll say a summary of my kangaroo care story i hope one day in future i can even put this into some sort of journal you know book or something because it is a lot you know so yeah that's it thank you so much um i, I had to turn down the volume of my computer so i'm not i'm basically not keeping track of your comments and that's because I didn't want an echo. So please, if you're watching this in a replay as well, I really want to know what you've picked up from my chat. If you've also had an, um, if you've also had a kangaroo care experience or not, let me know. Do you know someone as well that has um, practiced kangaroo care? Is there something else that you believe that you gain from kangaroo care? I would really, really love to know. I also promised as well that I was going to share our summer offer. That's because um, we really, really want to give something to you this summer. And we have a fantastic offer for summer. And it is, the code is 
jj for summer so i'm going to spell that j as joy j j for the four is number four summer as s-u-n-n-e-r so that code is one word no dots no hyphen if you go to the joy and joe website that's www.joyandjoe.co.uk and at our website checkouts of, of course you select the products you like our website checkout if you enter this code it's going to give you wait for this <laughs> an amazing 40 percent discount now many of you know that our products are manufactured in the uk they are not cheap to manufacture so offering these discount we know very well that you are getting a bargainous uh, offer it's going to end um at the end of summer you know around about the end of august so would love you to take advantage of this um, offer before it expires and i'm looking forward to having another chat with you hopefully next week friday i think um a previous uh chat last week friday i announced that there are some fridays that we might not be able to come live maybe technical problems like we initially had today with the internet or even a holiday or something but either way please follow our facebook that's joy and joe baby on facebook because that's where we usually post our updates also i really encourage you to join the joe and joe chatter page that is in my opinion i hope i'm not biased about that the most exciting baby wearing group in the whole wide world yes you really need to be there to see what i'm saying and lest i forget as well um we usually have weekly ambassador live videos and this is something that we actually introduced this year and is really really going on very well because we have ambassadors with different um, experiences from different facets of life and they have really brought their um, expertise and knowledge from different areas from their different walks of life and it, it, it's such an amazing way to learn from our ambassadors um, and you can actually catch up on the replay of our past live videos our weekly live videos on our youtube channel uh, we'll try to post links below <coughs> and also on if you go to the video section of this facebook page as well you can actually catch up on past ambassador videos and also these friday videos as well so we've only just started i've only just started this friday videos um but we've been having our ambassador weekly um live videos from the beginning of this year and it's going to continue till the end of the year hopefully and um, i can tell you that we've had wonderful wonderful topics that have been discussed from healthy eating <coughs> to wrap blend to caring for your wraps to fixing pools really really um knowledgeable really topics that would enlighten you and really interesting topics as well so i really love you to any video you watch to please leave a comment to ask a question we would we would hopefully get we will hopefully get notifications of your comments or your questions and we'll try to ask so i hope i have not gone beyond 30 minutes <laughs> but um i really really appreciate you for joining today thank you for sharing this video thank you for your comments and um, looking forward to chatting with you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I'll just switch up the video.